Hello guys, I'm Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. Finally, Google has announced Google Colab is coming to VS Code. As a heavy user of Google Colab myself and a heavy user of VS Code myself, I find this really interesting for developers and students. I remember when I was a student, I used to switch between these two because I want to have the ID feeling from VS Code and I want to run Jupyter notebooks style things where I can train my models and all sorts of things with the Google Colab runtime, right? Now, it seems like a future, but it's there as it is finally there right as you can see here today we are incredibly excited to announce the launch of new google Colab extension for vs code you can see there is this is two things win side by side in this video i will show you step by step guide but first let's just go through this announcement let's read this right the best of both worlds right the new Colab VS Code extension combines the strength of both platforms. For VS Code users, continue to be the editor you are familiar with. Connect local notebooks to high-powered Colab runtimes, including the pro tier runtimes with premium GPUs and TPUs, right? And for the Colab users, this integration is designed to support the workflows many Colab users already have. It's common to work on notebooks that are part of a larger projects or Git repository. A subset of Colab users want more powerful IDE features with increased extensibility. This extension bridges the gap between simple to provision Colab runtimes and the prolific VS Code editor, right? I completely agree on this. I think it's going to be super interesting and fruitful for those who are tired of switching between these two platforms. Now, let's directly jump into how we can do this. Okay, so I'm having some problem with VS Code in my local machine. I will show you the example from the code space in GitHub. If I go to my GitHub, you can see here, I will go on the top. There is this plus icon create new. From here, I will choose new code space. From here, you can choose any repository. I will choose, for example, this LLM resources. You can choose any of the repositories that you have there. And you can choose which branch you want to do. I'm going with the main branch. I am in the West Europe, so I will use this. You can choose any of these two core or four core. I can go with four core. This is also a good way that you can have this VS code kind of environment already running in the browser, right? We have Google Colab running in the browser. Now we have the VS code also, which still runs in the browser and you can connect them both. I can close the agent part here. First thing first, what we need to do is there is two things that you need to install. One is Jupyter extension, which is the prerequisite of the Colab. We can go to this extension here, right? And you can go here and search for Jupyter. Because we are going to work with Jupyter notebook, it needs to be installed. So here you can see Jupyter. It is not installed because in the code space, uh, you need to install each and every time when you run these projects for the first time. Yeah, now this is installed, right? You can see here, I can close this one. And then now I need to search for Colab, C-O-L-A-B, right? If I go with the Colab, you need to be careful that it is coming from Google. It is from Google and it was last released four days ago. You, you need to be careful in this one. Now I need to install this, right? I will close this. I don't need this now. This is the thing that you need to trust because when the extension, the extension collab is published by Google, this is the first extension you are installing from this publisher. This is verified and you need to trust, right? I will do trust publisher and install. That's it. Now this is being installed. So we have two things, one Jupyter install, another collab installed, right? The next thing is go to your explorer now i will create a new file test.ipynb ipynb meaning that this is a jupyter notebook file right now you can see here we have this collab also being shown here and there is this python 3 ipy kernel being shown the second step we need to be connecting that to some ipy kernel right if i click this one now so you can see it says here ipy kernel by default but i can say here select another and now you can see there is this 
collab option appearing here. If you are using VS Code, then you know that this collab option does not appear in other cases, right? I will click this collab here. And now you can see this is the three options here. One, auto connect, new collab server, and then this open collab web. We need to connect to our Google account, meaning that you need to have a Google account to connect to the server. I will click this auto connect. If I do this, it says the extension collab wants to sign in using Google. This is the thing you need to allow so that we can use the Google account that is connected to this. Similar to Google Collab, you cannot use Google Collab without signing in. I will say allow. Now it will try to open. I will say open. Now you can choose which you want to authorize. I will authorize with one of my email. Okay, now I will say allow for this. Now you can see it says here the site that are using is not hosted by Colab. Do you want to continue safely? Copy the code, enter the following code where the sign in attempts. Okay, I will copy this one. It says here the sign in attempt was started by this skipping automatic redirects to this. Okay, I will close this one and now it will ask me for the code. You can see here enter your authorization code here. I will just do control V here and paste. Now it is signed in to Google. You can see once that is signed in, then you will see these three different things. So either you need to choose the I, this Python 3 kernel or Yulia or R, right? I will go with Python. Now you can see this is connected to our runtime in Google Colab. Now I'll create a one code cell here and I will run here import pandas as pd. Now I have installed pandas here. If I do here, import pandas as pd, and now it is saying connecting to this and all sorts of things. It should be running because it is now connecting to the Google Colab. One thing, if I do NVIDIA SMI, right? If you are using the GPU, then when you run this, it will show you what GPU it is connected. But the thing is, it's similar to the Google Colab where when you connected normally it connects to the cpu right we are not connecting to gpu but i hope you use google collab mainly because you want to connect to the free gpus there right how to then get into that now is the another step that you need to follow i will go again to this ipy kernel this is the main thing that you need to be thinking here i will go to this ipy kernel and now i will say select another kernel from here I will say Jupyter kernel or existing. No, we need to go with the collab. Remember this one, collab, right? And now it will ask you which server you want to do. I am going to go with this new collab server where it says CPU, GPU, TPU. Just remember one thing here. If you just go with the auto connect, it will go with the CPU. If you want to go with the GPU, then you need to go with this new collab server. It will ask you now CPU, GPU, TPU, whatever you want to do. Let me see that I want to go with GPU, right? And what GPU? T4 GPU. And now you can give something or you can just hit enter. So now your Jupyter Notebook is connected to the GPU. And now you can choose which kernel. I will go with Python 3 again. If I run this, it should show me the GPU that this notebook is running. You can see. Now we are in the VS code, but you can see our runtime is connected uh, our, our IPy kernel. Now it is connected to the runtime of Google Colab. And now you can see here, what is this? You can see here memory and all sorts of things here. Tesla T4 is being connected and so on. Now the basic idea here is now you can use GPU from the Google Colab that is connected to this account. That's it. Now, whenever you want to, you are okay with it. One thing which I recommend highly is if you just click there, command shift P, and if you type Colab, there is the remove server, right? I highly recommend you to do this remove server, not to keep it running. And one thing is also if I go to Colab, and if I go a little bit down here, it says activate the command with this, select and assign collab server to remove, right? It's always better to remove it. I will just go here. I will run again 
I will do collab and there is this remove server. You can just click the remove server. Which one? Collab CPU or collab GPU? I can say here collab GPU and it says there is something running issue there, but I think it is close. If I run this again, if this does not run here, then it is cancelled. Let's see. I will do here select Python 3 and Python 3. This is a collab currently. If I go here, it will not work meaning that it is cancelled because now still I have the CPU. If you want to also cancel the CPU, just do again, remove the server. And now here is also the Collab CPU. Just click the CPU, removing the CPU here. Let's see if it removes or not. There is some issue, but I think that is removed. Now, if I run this again, it will not run because now we don't have any connected. It says currently selected, but it is not showing from where. If you connect this one, it does not happen anything. But if I run this again now, nothing is showing here. I hope that is helpful. I just want to create this because I had spent so much time in Google Collab and VS Code switching between these things. And I was hoping that someday there would be these extensions and integrating together. But now it's there. I hope you will be using these two extensions and your life will be much easier. That's all for this video. I hope you find the video helpful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.